As we get into the month of November, it is time to start talking about the big final project in our beginning level theatrical costuming class. Now, this is a small design project and I don't want you to panic. You don't need to be able to draw for this. We are walking through the process of what a designer does, which we've spent the semester talking about. We will be working with the play, A Solid Home by Elena Guerrero. And the project is due December 7th by 11.30 p.m. That's during finals week. And you'll find the play on Brightspace D2L. Okay, so let's get designing. First, you need to read the play. It's short. It's only five pages long. I'm sure you can handle it, but I've added a little extra information. So if you go to print it out, it's more like eight pages because there's some extra information about the playwright and about the play itself. So first, just read the play. What are your initial impressions? You might start underlining. This is your script notation time. This is when if somebody walks in the room and somebody else says, my, you're all dressed in red, you might underline that, highlight it, however you like to work with it. I like to work with what are called dry highlighters, or sometimes they're marketed as Bible highlighters, because Bibles are often printed on very thin paper because there are quite a few pages in there. Dry highlighters don't bleed through to the other side. And sometimes they're erasable, which is what I really like about them. So I will mark different things uh, about uh, the play. Uh, what's the theme? Is there a style to the play? Is it funny? Is it sad? Is it a drama? Is it a tragedy? What's going on? in the play. Where does the play take place? This one takes place in a specific cultural moment in a specific country, but then it also takes place in a specific location. Is it in the living room? Is it in the kitchen? Is it on the porch in the front yard? Is it in the church? Is it in the cathedral? Is it on a balcony? What is the time period? you're going to find as you're reading this play that the characters are in different time periods. So you're going to have to define what time period matches each character. So you're going to need to do a little bit of research into the country and the culture and a little bit of research into a few different time periods and what is appropriate. So your first assignment, and this is one of your asynchronous assignments, is to write a short play analysis. And that means a bare minimum of two paragraphs. Tell me the answers to these questions. What is the play about? What style is the play written in? What are the themes of the play? Where does it take place? And when does it take place? So this is a great time for you to use the skills that you learned in your play analysis course. You will find if you want to work in theater or you want to teach theater, you will use those skills over and over and over in your career. So now's the time to start applying them to other projects. All right. <clears throat> the characters. There are eight characters in this play. You need to know about these people in five pages. So the playwright is going to tell us direct things. An actor walks into the room, uh, or a character, I'm sorry, a character, an actor playing a character walks into the room and somebody else says, my, you're all dressed in red. Well, automatically, you know that person needs to be wearing red. Are their shoes red? Are there, uh, is it a cape? Is it a dress? Is it a pantsuit? Is it a blouse and trousers? What is all red about this person that would make somebody else say that? 
an actor playing a character walks into the room like a ship at full sail. That would be an indirect moment. Like, a, what does it mean to walk into the room like a ship at full sail? What does a ship at full sail look like? They're big, they're blousey, they move in the wind. What does that tell us about the clothes that that person is wearing when they walk into the room like a ship at full sail? Now, neither the wearing all red or the ship at full sail come out of this play because I'm gonna make you do the work about this. What can we infer about the character? If you were directing that play and you cast somebody in that part, what would you be looking for? If you were an actor playing that part, what would you be wanting to portray? How would you work with that character and create that within yourself as an actor or within somebody else as a director? What can you infer about this person? Do they smoke? Did they smoke? Are they an overeater? You can focus on the seven deadly sins as, oh, this person is gluttonous and this person is envious. Or you can take that all out of it and focus on it from another direction. You need to write a short character analysis for each character. So a minimum of one paragraph about each character. Now you'll have learned a little bit about this in play analysis. And if you've taken an acting course ever, you'll know a little bit about that. So it's time to start putting those ideas together. And it's time to start thinking about clothing. You get up every morning and you put on your pants, you put on your shirt. It's time to start thinking about clothes. We've talked about how clothing can tell us things about people by having a sharp pointed collar as opposed to a rounded collar. Are they a calm person? Are they excited person? What is clothing that looks calm versus clothing that looks excited? Now's the time to start thinking about that. How will you, as a designer, enhance the work of the playwright and the actor through your choices? Think about an excited piece of fabric might have squiggly lines on it, whereas a calm piece of fabric might have no lines on it, or think of large flowers that have smooth, rounded lines to them. You see how design can have emotion and action. This is thinking, all right? It's really important that you take incubation time because what happens in incubation time is you will change your mind. Sometimes in theater, we have to get plays going so fast that we don't have time to do incubation. So you go with your first idea. This happens to me all the time here, designing at SFA. And by the time the show opens, I'm like, oh, if I'd had more time, I would have done that differently. And it's very interesting because a lot of times students see that also, and they write that in their papers. Oh, if I'd done it, I would have done this instead. And my response is, I agree with you completely, but because of time or budget or the skill level of the people working on it, I had to go with idea number one. So take this time when you have the opportunity to sit on it for a while and say, ah, I see this character in a blue three-piece suit with a red tie. And then you sleep on it for a couple of days and you go, you know what? I think it would be better if instead of a red tie, it had a diagonal stripe to it. What if it was like a gold tie showing that the... To a tie that tells us more, it gets deeper into the character. 
Now, does the audience see, oh, look, his tie says he's angry? Absolutely not. There isn't a person in the audience, even a costume designer, who as soon as that walked out, what actor walks out on stage says, oh, look, he's wearing an angry tie. But it's subtle. And as the action of the play moves on, it's a subtly aggressive moment in the costume that helps explain the character. And at that point, the costume designer in the audience goes, ooh, I see what they did. Oh, that's very interesting. I'm gonna try that the next time I'm faced with a character like that. So take this time to start thinking about the things we've talked about and how clothing can enhance those moments on stage. All right, so next time, uh, I think on the syllabus it says something about sources of patterns, but that's not correct. We've already covered that. So I'll be talking about how you use color and research and how you put all that together for your design and how you're going to present that when you present your final project. So you should be getting together your play analysis, your eight paragraphs of character analysis. And if you really connect with a character, go further. The more you can talk about character analysis, the better. And we're going to start then on use of color and our research and start preparing our designs. Please remember, you do not have to be able to draw for this project. You do not have to be able to be draw to be a costume designer. It is helpful in getting specific ideas across, but it is not 100% necessary. I know very successful costume designers who can't draw. So don't panic. We will get you through this. We won't be talking about your final presentations until the 30th of November. So we've got time to work on that. But before that, we're gonna get through. So you've got to write your script analysis. You've got to write your character analysis. You need to start thinking about your clothing that these people are gonna be in. And then we'll have three days where we just talk about the other work of the designer. So thinking about all these things, thinking about color, putting together color and research and the paperwork, because there's going to be more paperwork that you need to do for this play. Then we'll talk about your presentation and then your presentation is due during finals week on December 7th. If you have any questions, please, if you're in Miller Science, stop by my office. If I'm there and I'm not in the middle of a meeting, I will be happy to answer your question right away. It's always convenient for you to send me an email. You can also send me an email and say, I'm available on Tuesdays and Thursdays afternoons. Do you have any free time? To give me a couple of times when you're available and I will shoot you back. We can meet via Zoom or you can come in in person or I can always answer a simple question over email. So don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions about this project. So I've spread this project out over a month so you can take your time with it, but it's really important that you start working on these parts of the project now so that you don't pile it all up for the first week of December when you're trying to get ready for your finals in your other classes.